All right, on today's tutorial, we are going to go over how to create a pin code um, that uses variables in Figma. So you can see here, I've got my little interbank screen. Um, and then you can enter any number and it appears there. And if it's not correct, you get a try again. Uh, and then if you do enter it correct, and it actually moves you into the next screen. Pretty cool stuff. Not too hard. Took a little bit to figure out the logic, but uh, I'll walk you through how I did it. That's pretty easy. Okay. So first things first. Um, we've got a number of variables set up here. Um, they're not organized. I should have done that. But we've got a number for code one. So that would be the first one code 2, code 3, and code 4. I've got one for the number entered so that we use that for the number that has been tapped on by any key. I've got booleans for code 1 entered, code 2, code 3, uh, and code 4 entered. Um, I'm not actually sure if I use code 4 entered but we'll see. I've got one for whether it's correct and then whether the code is incorrect. Uh, and you'll see why that's not just a boolean that I've got both of them. Um, you, you'll see. Uh, and then I've got this one which is actually uh, for something else. So don't worry about that one. Okay. Let's see how they all work. So the first thing I did is I made my code numbers. So you can see I've got a component for each of these. Um, I set up two different properties, error and access, you can call this correct. Um, and the reason I did that is so that I could set them to Boolean states in those, using those variables. So you can see this one is false for both. This one's true for error and this one's true for access. Uh, the reason I did it like that, there might be a better way, but when I put them in here, I tied the error to the error boolean and the access state to the access for the correct boolean. Uh, and what that allows us to do is have, because it, it's not a binary, there's actually three states of this, right? There's normal, there's an error state, and there's a correct state, which is why a simple boolean of, of correct or not won't work. But here you can see if you turn that to true, then they all change to the error state, and if you turn it to correct, they all change to the correct state. So that's the reason we did that. Uh, as you saw, I've also got a button for try again, um, and I have tied the layer visibility to error, uh, and then under prototype, on tap, I have it setting code 1, 2, 3, and 4 to 0, so resetting all of those, and then resetting all the booleans for the, whether those codes were entered to false, and setting error to false. So basically just resetting the whole system. So, if we go back and turn that off. The next thing we did for each of these, I went in and I set the text to code 1, code 2, 3, and 4, so on and so forth. You do that in the instance, not in the variable, or in the component. Okay, so that's all set up. Now for the the logic part, I've got... Now you could have done this all on one click, but I really wanted to have that mouse down, that hover, in, or, or, or while pressing interaction. Um, so, in order to achieve that, there's a bit of screwing around here, but on this state, so I have my two states, I've got, you know, normal and then pressed. On this state, the only thing we're doing is setting the variable number entered, and you can just set it to one on the component, and I'll show you why later. Um, but 
you're setting a number enter to something and then you're going to change to the next property and this is on touchdown I want to make sure that's clear on touchdown the number entered is set and then you're changing to our touchdown state now on our touchdown state I have on touch up and like I said if you don't want a touchdown state then you can just do this all on tap um, on our touchdown state our touch up state on our touched down button confusing anyway on this one on touch up this is where all our logic is uh, and the order of this logic is very important so we start by testing out if code one is entered so if code one is entered if it's not entered then set code one to number entered set code one entered to two true and then change to our default state and then the next one so what will happen is it'll go through and it'll test each one of these so if that's false it'll actually hit the change to and then won't trigger any of these other conditions so that's the key is adding in that change to state here not at the bottom okay because this is your way out of this sort of it's not really a loop but out of this sequence all right so if it's true it'll move on to the next one um, you don't really need to do if code one entered is true and code entered is false I did it just to be safe um, so basically if that's true and the next one's false then set code two to enter set code two to enter to true and then change and you kind of go all the way through um, code 2 entered code 3 is false do the same thing for code 3 to entered um, if it's true that means you're entering the fourth digit so this is the last thing that's going to happen uh, I don't know if you need to set code 4 entered to true I did it just to be consistent it's probably redundant but you set your code 4 to the number entered and now because you don't have a change to here it'll actually continue through to the next ones which is what we want so the next one is if code one so this is where you put in your actual number so if code one is equal to one code two is equal to two code three is equal to three code four is equal to four so basically if they're all equal to the right one then you set correct then I navigate to my next screen and then I change and the reason I put the change at the bottom is because the minute you change out of this, it'll stop doing any logic in here. So that's why the change back to the first state has to be at the bottom. Uh, if that's not true, then we set our error. And then the last thing we do is change to back to here. So, again, I'll, I'll try and summarize this because I know it's probably convoluted. If code one hasn't been entered, we set it to the number that's determined here. If it has been entered and the second one hasn't, then we set the second number. If the second one entered and the third one hasn't, then we set the third number, change back to our state. If the third one's entered, then we set the fourth one to the number entered, and then we check to see if it's the right code. If it is, then we set correct to true so that these will go green and then we navigate out of here otherwise if it's false if it's if um, code 4 is entered and correct is false then we set our error and then we change back um, okay so the only thing now left to do is remember on this one we just set it to 1 that's fine um, the reason I put this here is it saves a lot of time adding uh, interactions in once you get into putting this instance in your design. So now that the now that you've put all your numbers in, you just go through and you just under this variant interaction. So that one's fine, but under this one, you just change that one to two here in the instance. 
and then change that to three. That way you don't have to have components for each one of these. You don't have to have logic on every single one of these. They all use the component logic and you're just changing it in the instance. And then that's it. Then it'll work. Um, that's pretty much it. It's pretty easy stuff once you get the logic kind of in your head. Um, so yeah, you can see it doesn't, because we set these, each one of these is totally fine. Like this goes through and, 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 and then this resets our state. Um, yeah, hopefully that was helpful. Um, if you have a better way of doing it, leave it in the comments, like, subscribe, and uh, check out my Patreon where I'll put the file for this for all the Patreon members. Thanks again. See you next time.